<laughs> Being a parent is so hard. It's made so much harder when you don't get any sleep. Around the three month mark, Musa hit one of his many sleep regressions. And this hit us hard too. In fact, he was getting up every 15 minutes at night time, making life very hard for us. He wasn't well rested during the day and neither were we. But for four and a half months, we decided we were gonna sleep train him. Here's how we ferberized him. Before we start this, there's a few notes about the ferber method you need to know. You can't really sleep train before four months. The idea behind this method is so they understand that they can self-soothe to put themselves to sleep. They don't have the ability to do this before four months. At the same time, if you leave it too late, it's easier for them to resist. It's not impossible for them to sleep train, but if you leave it longer than eight months, from everyone I've spoken to, they have a much harder time. And more often than not, parents just aren't willing to go through with it. The other thing to know is this method is not for everyone, and that's okay. Not everyone has the heart to sleep train. I do, my wife doesn't, I'm a savage. One of you is gonna have to be okay with the fact that your baby's crying and making sure that you don't pick them up. That's important. If you're not gonna be able to stick through that, then don't do this method. Now there are some genuine reasons that babies cry, so obviously don't sleep train if your kid is sick. The modified Ferber technique. Here's what we did. We had a nighttime routine, which means that we'd bathe him, turn the lights down, use our quiet voices, and then put him in his crib at around 7.30. After patting him, I would leave the room. As soon as he started crying, I turned the stopwatch on. On day one, going to check in at three minutes. Don't pick them up. You can do anything else. You can pat them, you can shush them, you can do bicycle legs, rub their bellies, whatever you need to do. Just don't pick them up. Don't stay in the room for longer than one minute. Be out by then. Follow this chart. So essentially your next step is gonna be every five minutes. And then every 10 minutes after that, but only whilst the baby's still crying, obviously. As tempting as it is, don't pick up that baby. I told my wife I wasn't gonna let her go into the room. She found the whole thing very hard, understandably so. To give you a ballpark figure, Musa for day one cried at least one hour, 10 minutes. I think it was longer. I think it might've been an hour and a half. I can't quite remember now. Once he was out though, he was sound asleep. Obviously only restart the timer if the baby's actually crying. On day two, we had the same routine put him down again at 7 30 p.m but this time the check is slightly longer so the first check was at five minutes the second check was at 10 minutes and every subsequent check was 12 minutes this time it took him a total of 45 minutes for him to finally knock out but the important thing is he was learning how to sell suit much better than the previous day we kept following this for day three and four and he was continually getting better the times were coming down it was all getting great. And around day five, you can hit what's called an extinction burst. Here, Musa realized he was being conditioned. So he decided to fight it a little bit. So instead of that time coming down for when he was going to bed, it ever so slightly began to creep up. Nothing as bad as it was on the first day, which was over an hour, but it just began to creep up. But if you persist through this though, by the end of the week, we were putting him down and within 15, 20 minutes, he was out cold. He learned how to self-soothe successfully. Job well done. I cannot tell you the change this brought about in our lives. We were new parents. We had energy to be better parents. Musa was actually better because he was getting well rested at night, which means that during the day, he had energy to play, he was less cranky. It brought about important changes in all of us. And at the end, my wife was very glad that we did it, even though she was hesitant at first. Now, my wife is way too loving and caring to have been the one to have gone through with it. I'm not. <laughs> this also, by the way, fixed his napping routine. Because he'd learned to self-soothe, he got better at napping during the day too. It's hands down the best decision we made with the first baby, and we'll be doing it again with our second. The success of this method is dependent entirely on consistency and routine. Stick with the routine, and one of you has to be able to go through with it. Everyone I've recommended this to, and those who've been able to actually go through with it, have had great success. If you're watching this video, chances are you're as desperate as we were to be able to get some sleep. So I hope this helps.